You know, I love podcasting. I have since 2006, back when you had to use like a Dixie cup with string to make the thing work. And that's why I'm so excited that we recently moved Mysterious Goings On to Anchor FM to record our podcast. I got to tell you, I don't regret it a bit. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. First of all, it's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. And you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. I'm not going to lie to you, when I first heard about Anchor, I was a little dubious because I've been doing it the hard way for so long. But I got to tell you, it's very easy. Use a Stripe account get sponsors, you're not paying monthly hosting fees, the sound quality is great, the distribution is phenomenal. Friends, download the free Anchor app today if you want to start your own podcast or go to anchor.fm to get started. Remember, you heard it here first on Mysterious Goings On. Welcome to Mysterious Goings On. It's me, Alex, your host, and I've got to tell you something. I'm nervous as hell. Here's the reason. A lot of you may know that I, at one time, had a brief career in radio. Uh, It goes along with the face I have for radio. And uh, for about a year, year and a half, I was the host of a weekly talk show on uh, WKY AM in Oklahoma City. And uh, uh, the ratings were... um, about as low as the uh, the basement could get for that kind of thing. But still, I do know a little bit about how to put things together, I think. And then I get somebody like my friend Mary McKenna, who's going to appear on the show, who can basically, you know, talk me under the table and out the door and do it all while she's, you know, reading something and filing her nails. She can drink under the table too. She can drink me under the table too. And here she is. And that, <laughs> and I was waiting with my really bad intro for her to step in and save me. And she just did. Dear, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. So, oh thanks God. so much for appearing. And I, I'm excited to talk to you because not only do you have, a voice that, uh, and don't take this the wrong way, but is fairly legendary in the Kansas City area market. But you're also a delight and a friend, and I'm still, I'm still a little nervous that you're on. Oh, why? Because you just dabbled in radio. I just dabbled. I was a dabbler, but I freely admit you're I was a dabbler. a dabbler. Yeah, you know, and this whole podcast thing, where now everybody and their dog's got a podcast. You know, it's kind of funny because I started doing this stuff and podcasting and like. 2006 back when it first started and you had to like get your uh, dixie cup tied together with some string and bailing wire and try to make it work it was horrible and you know you you get pitying looks from people who are actually on the radio and now it seems like everybody's got one and um it's easy to get eclipsed by people i'm sorry everyone's got one and and a lot of them are better than uh hello terrestrial I was going to say transitional, but that wasn't it. Terrestrial radio, which I think is, and it's not a you know bitter party of one. Your table's ready. I just think it's, <laughs> I just think it's kind of sad. Uh, everybody is uh, on a meter. Uh, they call them uh, people meters. Right. And uh, basically, if it's not a forward moving, if you haven't hit the punchline, if there's no music moving, someone's going to change the station. And so everybody's in fear of that. And so they don't take times to they don't take the time to develop some type of routine or uh, build up to the comedic you know climax. They just introduce the next song and just keep peddling the music. And I think it's just kind of sad. I think it is too, and, and but but podcast 
has developed a way for people and it's all very niche of course except for the really big ones you know but i mean there's there's podcasts i listen to that are about just for fun like about the paranormal there's podcasts i listen to that are about uh short stories and podcasts there's podcasts about sex there's podcasts about fitness it seems like now there's a menu and you you know if you if you can't find a podcast about something that interests you you're not trying very hard is there anyone, I mean, I haven't really looked into it too much, uh, uh, podcasts on just napping and sleeping, because that's my favorite thing to do. <laughs> well, there are some podcasts that are so good, they'll help you nap and sleep. So I was thinking uh, it was called Meditation Apps, Mary. Oh, yeah, there you go. There you go. So, you know, let's yeah. take a step back, though, for the folks who don't know. You have worked in and around radio your entire career, basically. I know you did a brief turn in PR with the with the government in Jackson County, Missouri, but basically, if oh I oh my god, that was terrible. What? <laughs> That's so funny. I was green. I was greener than gourds. I was I was just so as they say. How many other cliches can I come up with? Wet behind the ears type of thing. I I let uh, newspaper reporters uh, freak me out. I had deer in the headlight disease. You know, they'd come to me and ask me a question, and instead of saying something intelligent like, "Well, let me get back to the ex- county executive and uh, and I'll be able to give you more of a detailed report on that a little bit later," I had no idea what they were talking about because the county exec- executive hadn't shared any of the information with me, and so I was like, uh, 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 I, "I don't know. What are you talking about?" I was just a God, I was abysmal. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> okay, we want to make sure you get that out of your system. I don't think we're, we'll That's be hearing. I don't think we'll be hearing much about how abysmal you were when we talk about getting in the radio. So let me ask you that though. You did some radio in college, right? And that was that your first taste of radio? Yes, I uh, I started at uh, KCMW, which was the college campus radio. But unlike a campus radio, it was uh, licensed. Uh, uh, you know, it was in, you could listen to it in Kansas City, Missouri. Oh my gosh, it, it went beyond the campus, and uh, I learned to appreciate jazz because it was a jazz station at night, and I did a little bit of everything. I was uh, uh, the station's uh, student liaison, which means I thought my <clears throat> didn't stink. I didn't get paid for it, but. Uh, but I got to weigh in with uh, some of the powers that be on what we should do, and that made me think I was something, you know, something. Yeah, well, I was well, something. Well, perhaps, right. per- perhaps, just maybe, and uh, you know, don't throw anything at me, but maybe you were something. How about that? That's a whole other show we can debate. Oh my god, <laughs> what was she? <laughs> oh my goodness! So you did that, and you graduated there, and I know you you did start out. So you started out as a reporter, correct, uh, uh, on the radio? Well, I I started there as kind of a, a music jock, and mm-hmm. I also did the 355 news headlines, right. and I would break out into the huge red hives on my neck. <gasps> oh, bless your heart. My chest every afternoon because it just scared me to death. Uh, I left there when I, uh, well, actually, while I was still in college, I did local news. I was a news director for a little... Uh, station called KOKO or COCO uh, in Warrensburg, Missouri. And uh, then when I graduated, I I took my senior internship at KMBZ, mm. 98.1 FM now. It was 980 AM at the time. And I just stayed there for, well, about six years. So when did you... And your primary... It's not I, how talent... I'm sorry, I keep talking over you. Well, you're, yeah, that's your job, keep talking. I'll be quiet the more you talk. No, I was going to ask if... You, did you kind of decide, okay, I like being a jock more, or I like doing the news, or did it matter to you? It's just, hey, hand me a script, put me in front of a microphone? No, when I first started, all I did was news, and that's all I knew, really. When I left there to go to KFKF, where I spent the next 25 years which makes me older than dirt, I, I didn't know how to do that either. And I have to tell you, I was blessed at the time to meet an individual who just wanted to uh, let me shine. And he's passed now. Dan Roberts was his name. He passed away a few years ago for pancreatic cancer. But yeah. I came in and I said, I don't know really what I've I'm doing. I'm just, he said, well, let's just talk. Let's just have a conversation. And we chit chatted and we, and, uh, 
the the powers that be there said, well, I don't know, what do you think? And Dan said, I think she's great, and we have good chemistry together, and so I got a job there. <laughs> I love it. That's fantastic. We all need a mentor like that. We're not all blessed to have a mentor like that. You know, you and I have talked before. We're, we go back a little, a few years, not 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 as long as you've been in radio, of course, but, um, <clears throat> but we do go back a few years. And I can recall talking to you over lunch a few times about, and I believe this is what you said, it was more or less especially when you were uh, doing your, your long stint there, it, it wasn't like work. It, every day was fun, or at least for a long period of time it was. So, is that a fair statement about how long, it was? Yeah, absolutely. And then I had to go out and get a real stupid job, and, and that's, I was like, <laughs> oh, my God, I have to work. This sucks. <laughs> but uh, part of it was how young I was at the time, and we were all kind of kids. And we loved going to the concerts, and it was all new to me, and we were backstage, and it was just hilarious, and, and everybody was a clown. And then as you got older, it became more of a job, and you didn't go to all the concerts because you'd seen some of the same people 15 times. Hmm. You didn't really care. It was it was like, I have to go MC a concert, as opposed to when I first started is, I get to go MC a concert. Right. I was excited about it, you know. Did, did, so did, did, then eventually did, the excitement, <laughs> it's kind of like a marriage, eventually the excitement goes away. Well, there's there's a good kind of a grind, and there's not so good kind of a grind. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> We're not even drinking. Hey, so... We are, we, no. <laughs> let me ask you this, though. So, but... When what was the part though that you loved the most? Was it when you had a, a co-host, an on-air person that you could just that you clicked with, and that there was? I mean, because if you listen to the air checks that that we're playing a few here on the show, but if you listen to the air checks, just about how quick and sharp and witty, and I know that from knowing you offline, and that's one reason you and I I think click a little bit, is I'm not as sharp as you are. She could be the next American Idol, and she's from Kansas City. Rachel Wicker joins us this morning. Rachel, good morning. How are you? Oh, I did do some embarrassing stuff, though, like uh, talk about bodily function. Wait a minute. Kind of embarrassing. On camera? What possessed you, Rachel? Well, well, they asked me like what I was going to do to celebrate after I got my golden ticket, and and I was just the first thing that popped in my head was, oh, I got to, I got to poop. Since you revealed something about yourself. Oh, wait okay. a minute. That that feeling comes over her whenever there's a sale. I told you that in confidence, Dale Carter. Oh my gosh. I have a shopper's colon. Was that what it was for you the most, or was it was it something else about it that you loved, besides the fact that it wasn't a real oh. job, as you said earlier? Ha-ha. It was so much on air as it was off air. It was uh, a group of people in both places where I worked. I was at KMBZ as a news reporter, and then uh, I was a partner with, here's a name everyone will know, with Rush Limbaugh for about three years. Oh, my God. When he was still in Kansas City at KMBZ. Years later, when you're off the radio and doing internet radio, you and I were on a show together, and I think you said to me at one point, yeah, the first thing I noticed about you is you're you're pretty full of yourself. <laughs> I can't believe you shared that. <laughs> hey, it's all, if you if you listen to this podcast, there's very few secrets from me and my listeners. <laughs> but it was true. You, uh, well, the, the gentleman who actually was the host of the show, and you were kind of the co-host. Yeah. I was supposed to have been the on F on F on <laughs> off air <laughs> producer. That was almost slip. Uh, almost. I was supposed to have been the off air producer, but I believe uh y'all thought I was just so glib and so fun that you True. put me on the air. And I remember one time and it was just too funny because you turned the beat red. <laughs> oh you rem- remember this I don't uh, remember what I, it was, it was but that we were getting ready to record. Yeah. And uh, you were wanting to know if I was ready. And I said, I'm ready, Alex. <laughs> and you just fell apart. <laughs> if I'd known it was that easy, I would have done that a long time before. <laughs> it was, the, the timing was perfect, and I wasn't really ready for you. And I didn't know you, and I was very intimidated by you anyway. And so when you did that, I just lost it. Yeah, I remember, and, and our, our the client, our co-host, uh, it was funny because we were both working for this gentleman, basically. But yeah, he thought it was hysterical. He loved that. We had several moments with him that were actually a blast. He was a pretty fun guy. But yeah, but you and I yeah, had, a, had, a, had a good time. And I'll never forget the first time you said, hey, let's just let's go get lunch or something. Because I really thought you couldn't stand me. And apparently you got over it. <laughs> so. 
Yeah, I worked through my feelings. <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> but but hey, enough, enough about me. This isn't about me. But I'm really... And and I should kind of just fast forward to after your your I fast forward through this brilliant career in radio, but you're still in radio. You did take a detour, like where we worked together. Um, you're working internet radio for a few years, but now you you may have potentially the largest listener base that you've ever had. Is that fair to say? Where you are now? Yeah. Tell the, us where uh, you are now. What are you doing? A million and a quarter, maybe. Wow. So what Everyone. we assume on a week, I, I, you know, weekly basis. Uh, well, I'm on Sirius XM. And I'm on channel 146, and everybody's going, gee, I've never listened to that channel. Well, there's probably very good reason for it. <laughs> Unless you're a truck driver or in the transportation industry, it's very doubtful that you would listen to what's called the road dog. The road dog is the name of the channel. And all day long, seven days a week, it's all about trucking. Uh, our show is uh, a news and information show that airs daily. And we talk about what's going on in Washington. Uh, I'm associated with uh, the uh, owner-operator Independent Drivers Association, of which there's 162,000 members now. And we are basically a mouthpiece for, for the organization and also to cover straight news of what's going on in the transportation industry. We have four uh, lobbyist in Washington, D.C., who we talk to every day and interview every day about what's going on. And I will tell you that this is the closest I've ever had to be to politics, and it makes my skin crawl. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, we, that could be a whole other episode where we, both of us talk about our political interactions. It's uh, Oh, yeah. my goodness. I, I don't miss being a lobbyist. I don't miss being a candidate. I... I really don't. I understand. It's it's the whole sausage being made thing. You're too close now. Now you know how the sausage is being made. Well, and so many times I know that we can't actually do something about one particular um, senator or representative because we might need them later on down the road. Right. We can't express our opinions. Uh, I, and I'm not talking about on social media, but we can't go to someone else and say, so-and-so did us wrong by not doing this, because you don't know when you're going to need them next week, or next month, or the next Congress, or whatever. So you just have to play that really nice middleman kind of person. <clears throat> Excuse me, and you know how good I am at that. Oh, yeah, that's your skill right there, man. Yeah. <laughs> but but you, 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 you're, you're walking on eggshells constantly. And I'm not even in this line of work, but I don't know if the average American understands how important independent truckers and truckers are in general. Without trucking, this country doesn't move at all. Do you like to eat? Do you like to sleep on sheets? Do you like toilet paper in your house? Do you, I mean, it's like, there. yeah, it's everything we use. Everything we use. Uh, just even if you went to a concert, how many trucks are required to get, you know, uh, your favorite band to the amphitheater and watch a show. It's it's, so it's true. amazing what there are um, uh, three million truck drivers uh, on the roads every day. And uh, before anybody goes, yeah, and they're awful and they cause a lot of wrecks. No, they don't. Seventy hmm. percent um, hmm. of uh, and you know you'll have to look it up because you could say, oh, well, she's just biased, and I am. <laughs> but seventy percent of most large truck accidents are caused by what we call the four-wheelers, the passenger cars, the motorist who cut in front of a truck yeah. and they don't have time to stop, or they're in their blind spot with their mirrors, or they pass them on the right side of the of the truck, which is very much a blind spot for truckers. Yeah. And it's somehow uh, they get the bad rap in mainstream media, and it's not really their fault most of the time. You know, it's, uh, it, it stuns me when I'm out on the road because I see people who, they don't understand that an 18-wheeler does not have the stopping power. They can't just stop on a dime like, you know, your, your four-wheel car, pretty much you hit the brakes and you're stopped in a few feet, basically. A truck with, mm -hmm. especially if it's a truck hauling a full load, right? I mean, it takes forever. 80,000 pounds, generally. Good gravy. I mean, you're going to be smushed. And if you're, and I see it all the time. And then these people have the nerve to flip the bird to the trucker. And I'm just like, oh, geez, you know. People I know a lot of truckers who have personally, I mean, I know a lot of truckers, members of our association, who have actually ditched the truck, gone and, and pulled over and, and, and the truck went over on its side rather than run into, let's say there was a, a, a 
a jam up ahead of them and somebody pulled up in front of them rather than run into them, which then would run into everybody else, and there would be fatalities. Right. They have purposely taken the truck off the road and uh, sometimes done injury to themselves. And I'm not saying all truckers are like that, but the bulk of them are. They're mostly pretty good guys yeah. and gals. And gals, right, right. You ever doing a ride-along? I'm not yet. I was going to do one with uh, our tour truck driver, uh, who uh, John goes from truck show to truck show to truck stop all year long and is out there. He's the representative. He's he's also our, our eyes and our ears. We've got truck drivers who come in and talk to him and say, I don't like this and blah, 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 and they complain about this, that, or the other. So we find out what's going on with the, the truckers out on the road, it's like they want to know why this is this and have you done anything about that and could you have so, look, For instance, uh, with the tax change that came about where the one percenters got this huge, wonderful tax cut, right? You remember that? Uh, you know that, rings right? A, rings a bell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, company drivers, now we represent a lot of owner-operators, but company drivers uh, lost their per diems, which for some company drivers, if they drive most of the year, is like a $16,000 pay cut. Uh, they can't write it off. Yikes. So we're fighting to get the per diems back for them. But uh, as long as the Republicans are in control of the Senate, that's probably not going to happen. So they're, they're, in a, they're in opposition to that. Is it simply because it was their tax bill and they don't want to mess with any of it? Is, is that it? or is it? Is, and we don't have to get well, too deep have, here. We don't have to get too deep, but the point of the fact is it'll have to come from somewhere, and that means probably giving back a little bit or uh, ah. taking more away from the one percenters. That's not going to happen. We kind of tacked through your career in a way here. So we started college radio. And it wasn't just you're limited to campus college radio. It wasn't just like, hey, I've got a tree fort and we have a radio station. It was a real deal. You could hear it all over the place. And then you got into the actual legit um, terrestrial radio scene for, for 25 plus years. Uh, 30. I did six years at KMBZ, left oh. to go to KFKF, and then uh, and then left there, Went came back to KMBZ as a co-host of a, I say women's talk show, but it was not a women's talk show. No, the radio the dish. radio dish. Oh, man. Definitely. It was it was a morning radio show that just happened to be hosted by two women. And I was on it once. I enjoyed it very much. It was a good time. The, well, thank you. Yeah, oh, yeah it, was, it was. It was a blast. Um, uh, again, I was, I was still like sitting there going, she hates me. Why did she invite me on? But anyway, so but but you did that. And then you, you did you did online radio, and then now here you are on satellite radio. So you have really, and now you're on a podcast right now. So you have basically done it all. And let me just ask you, you were, uh, I mean, radio, particularly FM radio, had a huge heyday while you were a star here locally, you know. And, yes. And what, can you give me an idea um, about what that was like for you, um, one as professional, but two also as a woman in the business. Did how did things change between the eighties and the aughts? Well, I will tell you that all the the Me Too's that we hear about the Me Too stories. Mm -hmm. If you want Me Too stories, I could just totally bore you with many, 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 many Me Too stories wow. uh, here locally and or in Nashville, where uh, I was in country music. For the 25 years I was at KFKF, so all of the uh, the CMAs, occasionally out in Los Angeles at the Academy of Country Music Awards, uh, and other programs throughout the year in Nashville, and record label reps think they own you, and they certainly buy you all the liquor you want, and that is not necessarily a complimentary <laughs> combination. <laughs> <laughs> so you were kind of fending, but, fending, fending off a lot of handsy dudes. Oh, yeah, no doubt. But the thing of it is, I I just assumed, and talking to my other fellow female radio uh, people of the same generation, uh, it just happened. Nobody bitched about it. Nobody complained about it. It's not that we were, I mean, I don't know, because if you did, you would be out of a job. We would have all been out of jobs. So it has changed greatly, because now, it's, you know, definitely not allowed that was my question so do you, has that legit changed now i mean is that culture dead as a doornail or do, are there probably probably as far as you think pockets of it still going on or do you think by and large 
women are a lot, for want of a better term, safer in the workplace? Or how do you, what do you mm, think? I think they're safer in the workplace, but I do believe that uh, the, the record label leches are still alive and well. And, and unfortunately, especially for a woman who has some type of either a program director, their management program director, or a music director, someone who has some kind of say on what gets played on a radio station, or more importantly, how a, uh, a record rep can help you or hurt you. Let's say they're a record representative for, well, now Garth Brooks is bigger, he doesn't need a record rep, but let's say for Garth Brooks, and you want Garth Brooks to come to your city to perform a concert. Well, if you were nasty mean to this record rep, then you might not ever see Garth Brooks in your town. That type of thing. It's a lot of power. Yeah. Difference between terrestrial and satellite radio. We were talking earlier about podcasts and how everything's very niche. So satellite radio is very niche. I mean, as you said, how many people knew there was a trucker channel, basically, right? Um, what do you think? Is that the future of, of not just radio, but media in general? Do you believe it's going to continue this direction where it basically all media will be there for the taking? You just pick and choose what you want, kind of like cord cutting with TV. I've done that. I can kind of pick the uh, I think st- it's stuff I want to watch. Definitely a la carte. Yeah, it's it's a la carte radio. I, I truly believe that, uh, except for maybe music. But even Apple Music has changed that. Where, like my daughter, uh, who's sixteen, uh, doesn't listen to terrestrial radio unless she's stuck in my car because I'm too <laughs> cheap to buy satellite. Isn't that terrible? I'm on satellite radio and I'm too <laughs> cheap to buy satellite. <laughs> what I love is that now, you're fully admitting it. Truthfully, to be honest, the marketing department will set me up if I would just give them the numbers on the back of my little satellite radio, which my car has. But I'm just, it's like, eh, I'll do it tomorrow. Oh my uh, I'll do it next You know, you're missing. I, 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 I listen, and I've listened to Landline, by the way. I've listened to Sirius. Uh, I have Sirius XM. I've had it for years. I got it years ago when my little girl was just an infant. I got it for like a Father's Day gift. I'll admit it, it was kind of fun and all that. And I've got it in my car and I can listen online. That's where I listen to it a lot. Um, it's getting, it got a few years in where it was getting more and more expensive, but actually Sirius XM kind of works with you. If you say, I, I'm thinking I'm going to have to shut this down. They'll work with you a little bit on the price. Uh, but I, I guess my point being though, I've stuck with it because it's worth it because I like to hear voices such as yours. I like to hear, um, I like to be able to go, okay, if I'm in the car and i actually in the mood for the, the shit show in D.C., I can go to CNN or go to one of the special channels and listen to that stuff, you know? That's rare. Mostly I just – I'm stuck, though. I'm stuck in, like, 80s hell. I listen to a lot of 80s music and new wave music and, and some country and all that stuff. But I've got about my five or six stations. But there's one station I really love to, just to put a, a point here, is I love the Beatles channel. I listen to that one. I, I knew that. that. See that. But doesn't that cost more? It's, See, again, the cheapness, the cheapness kind of thing. I don't know if it costs more. It seems to be part of my, yes, my you package. Have to pay. You have to pay for the Beatles channel in addition to your satellite prescription, the way I have always uh, understood I've it. Never, I've never had any issue turning over to it at all. It just, and I've never hmm. seen anything on my bill that indicates that. So, Well, you must be special. Well, you know I am kind of special, and I'm full of myself. So... Um, I know we've got to wrap this up. See, you and I could talk for hours, but I wanted to get to this one last thing really quickly, because one thing listeners to this show know is that we like to talk about creative endeavors and you're in a very creative profession. So I wanted to ask three questions about that before I let you go, because I know you've got to get to the gym and then you've got to get home to your daughter and your husband and all that stuff. But I wanted to just ask you this back when you were on the air, did you, especially when you were the co-host, right? The morning show kind of thing. Did you, did you write bits ahead of time? Oh, God, no. No? Very seldom. Now, occasionally, you'd have the punch. You'd know what direction you were going, and everybody knew what the out was. So it's kind of like, I like to think about when you're playing Sandlot Sandlot baseball, and people are going to see who bats first, and you grab the bat, and then the next fist goes, and the next one, and somebody puts a hand up on top of the bat. So you you don't override the punch line. So if everybody knows what the out is, there's, but sometimes there's always some kind of snarky jerk who wants to try to t- out-punch your punch. Uh. 
they don't they're not well liked by most people well because like, they're punchline move on right you're not serving the show very well if you're trying to get the last word if the last word isn't funny or or interesting right i mean let uh, me tell you something i was told a long time ago which i have kept near and dear to me ever since because it's the truth uh, a man who is uh, a friend of mine he's down in dallas now who does a lot of voice work but he was my program director for a while dean james and he said have fun stop being funny Wow, I love that. That's so true. Because you're, you're, if you're trying too hard, people can tell, right? Oh God, it sounds forced. Yeah, yeah, and rehearsed. Have you and have you noticed now when you go back and look, uh, watch old television shows sometimes, how rehearsed and they are building to the punchline kind of thing, and it's like everybody has their part. They're not funny. They're they're uh, they're trying to be funny as opposed to having fun. Well, that strikes me as most sitcoms even today uh it's it's just beat 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 joke laughter beat beat yeah, not all right. of them right not all of them but you hear that not a lot all. and i i think i did something on twitter a few months ago you caught where i was talking about okay this is the disney channel kids shows it's beat beat dumb remark hold for laughter move on you know it, and it's not even funny but anyway so one last thing you also i know you don't do a ton of this right now or maybe you do more than i know you do i know you do it but um, it's probably not the major part of your work life at the moment, but you also run uh, a commercial voiceover business where you do voiceovers, I assume, for spots, uh, radio spots, uh, advertisements, TV, that kind of thing. Is, is Television, tele- whatever, yeah. Uh, do- MaryMcKennaVO.com. Might as well get my plug out there. Yeah, so it, but the question would be, and this is the question I have to ask because all these writers who listen to this show, so you haven't done a lot of books yet, as far as I know, right? I've done two. And one, and they were both, well, they weren't, oh, God, they were boring. They were both <laughs> health books. Right. One was about, one was a, a doctor who, kind of an alternative type doctor who was anti-milk and anti-this and anti-that as far as raising your children. Oh, my God, that was terrible and painful. And the other one was about mental health. <laughs> so, no. I've not done any fun books. I'd love to do books. And I've, I've talked to uh, uh, a mutual friend of ours, Mr. Uh, uh, Jason McIntyre. Oh, the, the great and, Canadian uh, writer, yes. Yeah, he, he can't afford me, though. <laughs> I, I, I know that's why I haven't hired you yet. I can't afford you either. I'd love to. I, listen, I'm dying for you to do one of mine. I know exactly which one I want you to do, too. But, uh, yeah, I'll just have to uh-huh. save my pennies because you're worth it. I'd cut you a deal. Really? All right. Well, let's talk offline about that. But if so, so, you know, but seriously, if there are writers out there interested now, you don't work through ACX or anything, right? You work directly through your website or through your, through you. You know what I'm saying? ACX is where right. you can go, you can audition people and stuff like that. You don't do that, right? Uh, I have worked through Voices.com or Voices, wait a minute, is that the one? Yeah, Voices.com, although I'm ready to uh, end that relationship uh, they're out of Canada. Nothing wrong with that, but they do favor Canadian artists over U.S. artists, and so I'm going to change that as far as a uh, as the platform for getting. But that's just commercials. I don't believe that they do any audio books, hmm. and I've okay. never really auditioned for those in the past. I just came. They came to me because I was in the right place at the right time, and who I was and where I worked. Last question. If, and I know you're, you're doing great where you are, but what if, what if, you know, the same kind of gig you had for 30 years popped up again where you were back on terrestrial radio? Is it the same kind of job you think anymore, or would it interest you at all? Or, and, I, and I, I'm not trying to say that you have a problem with where you are now. Just saying, though, if it was back in your heyday, the, the morning show type work, would that interest you now? You know what? I believe it would interest me greatly, but I think I would end up being disappointed uh, because of the constant motion to keep it moving, keep it going forward, don't develop anything, just just do your promotion. Uh, most, If you'll notice most radio stations, if you'll listen to a local jock in a major market radio station, every time they break the mic, that 
is a time for them to promote an upcoming event, either on their show, on someone else's show, or that weekend they'll be at this place or this location, or there's a concert coming up that you need to know about. And they might be glib about it. They might have a little bit of fun, but it is never anything that comes out of their mouth that is a, an original thought about them, about what's going on in the world, or what is just genuinely interesting in life. It is about promoting the station at all times. Well, there you have it. Any advice for the for the those interested in a career in satellite, terrestrial, even podcasting? What do you think? Is it is it worth it? Oh, I don't know too many people who make a lot of money podcasting, mm-hmm. except you, of course. You're raking it in. I know that. I am raking but, in the cash, babe. <laughs> but I do know that. Uh, You know, if it's something that you love, as they say, if you do something you love, you'll never work a day in your life. So if it's something truly that you love, and that's why I'm here, even though I never thought I would be doing anything involved with the trucking industry, to be quite honest. uh, But I like talking to people. I like getting the message out. I like, I love especially have opinion pieces because I love to share my own opinion. God knows. You? Really? You? Yeah, oh no, big surprise. Oh, I wow. wanted to say big surprise till the end. <laughs> <laughs> Mary McKenna, what a delight. Folks, if you want to get a hold of Mary about doing some work and making your stuff sound fantastic, she's at MaryMcKennaVO.com, and she's also right there on your Sirius XM dial. That's channel 146 for Landline Now. And that's America's first daily one-hour news program produced by Owner-Operator Independent Drivers Association exclusively for the professional driver. And uh, I've listened to it, and I've found it very informational and fun. So, hey, Mary, it's been a blast. Thanks so much for coming on Mysterious Goings On. It was my pleasure. We'll do it again sometime. I like that. Okay. Talk to you soon. A little flexibility can go a long way. By refinancing your newer used auto loan with PenFed, you can lower your monthly payments for more flexibility in your budget. You can even schedule your first payment for up to 60 days from the date of your refinance. Calculate how much you could save at PenFed.org slash auto refi or call 1-800-247-5626 to apply. Membership is open to everyone. To receive any advertised product, you must become a member of PenFed, insured by NCUA. Get a credit card that gives you what you need now. A low interest rate on everyday purchases and a place to transfer high interest rate balances. The PenFed Gold Contactless Card is our lowest interest rate credit card. You can even earn a $100 statement credit when you spend $1,500 in the first 90 days. Join PenFed and together we can help you keep more of what's yours. Visit PenFed.org slash gold card. To receive any advertised product, you must become a member of PenFed, insured by NCUA.